Today I'm hoping to demonstrate a triple procedure consisting of a desect corneal transplant, cataract removal, and IOL insertion. You can see that what I'm uh, injecting here is viscoelastic in preparation for performing the uh, capsularexis here. That little opacification on the anterior surface is a bullous lesion, a uh, essentially a blister on the surface of the cornea. Uh, you can see I'm performing a, uh, a uh, capsularexis here, followed by hydrodissection and then uh, cataract removal. Uh, not so critical that we worry about the corneal endothelium as uh, this is going to be replaced in this patient with uh, fused corneal dystrophy. That central area is a bullous lesion. I'm going to remove at the end, and I'll explain why I'm going to remove that at the end. And so here, this is a ultrasound phaco emulsification procedure that I'm performing uh, toward the end here. And now I'm going to go ahead and remove the subincisional residual cortex first. This is the residual uh, cataract material that I remove in uh, preparation for inserting the intraocular lens. I want to make sure that I've got all the lens material, all the cataract out of the, uh, the patient. I'll remove that uh, central area at the end. If, if my visibility was restricted, I'd remove that earlier. Um, however, I'll take that out at the end uh, in an effort to reduce the risk of having loose epithelium around. Uh, and the risk of uh, epithelial downgrowth. Here I'm just removing the last part of the residual capsule, putting in some viscoelastic here in preparation for insertion of the intraocular lens. This is a foldable acrylic lens. As much as I like the, the, the plate columnar lens, I tend not to use it in patients with uh, DSEC or DSAIC procedures because if I need to replace that down the road and there's an open capsule, it can dislocate. Now you see I'm using the uh, nucleus manipulator here. Uh, after I in, uh, reposition the intraocular lens, I immediately go to scoring the uh, decimase membrane in preparation for removing the uh, posterior collagenous layer, uh, decimase, and abnormal epithelium. So I'll go ahead and do a uh, decimeterexis or tearing the procedure with the uh, Carlson DeSake forceps. You can see this uh, tearing here creating a nice margin from uh, from uh, abnormal uh, epithelium uh, endothelium rather. Going to uh, tear this around in uh, preparation for the donor tissue. I have a specimen here that I insert uh, or, or pass off to the uh, to the pathology lab, and also for uh, Dr. Natalie Afshari's research that looks at the genetics of uh, Fuchs corneal dystrophy. I'm going to go ahead and just tear this off, and I'll submit that. That goes on some filter paper here. This is a procedure I've started to do recently with, that involves creating a, an inferior peripheral iridectomy from posterior to anterior. And uh, it just reduces the risk of having really high intraocular pressures related to a pupillary block that develops from air from anterior. So. This is a uh, removal of the cohesive viscoelastic and making sure that the intraocular lens implant is properly centered uh, within the capsular bag. There we go. I'll go ahead and put an anterior chamber maintainer in. This is a low flow anterior chamber maintainer. I properly center the donor tissue under the microscope and uh, Go ahead and cut it in preparation for insertion. Removal of the rim. Enlarge the wound to 3.7 millimeters. 
put a little viscoelastic in just in just to protect the donor tissue. Uh, take the donor tissue here that's been prepared. I'll take a, a Calibri forcep after I put a little Helon GV on the endothelial surface. Go ahead and just peel this back. Now slide the Peyton spatula in between the tissue and uh, remove it, flip it around. And I'll take a cystotome and very gently just slide this in. This has been a remarkably easy technique uh, for inserting donor tissue. And then I'll just, with a little bit of air, it's just enough to hold the tissue in place. And uh, I can scooch it into position here. And then once I get it into the right position, I'll go ahead and uh, increase the, uh, the air fill. And now you'll see what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off that loose epithelium. I could have done this earlier and it would have helped my visibility, but I just don't like loose epithelial cells around that could put possibly lead to uh, an ingrowth or downgrowth into the, uh, into the eye. So uh, now that I've got all the tissue in, I've got a secure wound. I'm just going to go ahead and remove that loose epithelium and uh, I did this on the first eye, by the way, and it worked out terrifically. So I have great confidence that it's going to work again on this eye. And uh, had this been a more significant anterior corneal scar, uh, I would have had to uh, uh, done a full thickness point, uh, corneal transplant, but uh, I wasn't, uh, didn't have to in this case, uh, fortunately. And uh, this patient's done remarkably well.